Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Really? You woke me up for this. 3 for 1 half. Large bag of water causes internet outage. I'm on vacation. Hold my emails. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Really? You woke me up for this. While I did work in tech support in a cell phone call center for five months, a special level of hell that has a separate thread on Reddit, technically I've never been official tech support. I've usually just been the guy who knows computers and gets tasked with taking care of everything that the powers that be don't want to call the professionals about. So I'm doing tech support, but I'm not tech support. For the most part, which can be inferred soon, I hope, I have nothing but mad respect for civilian tech support. In all of my civilian jobs I'm usually the guy that had to translate between the staff and tech support because most end users can't articulate the actual symptoms and or problems well enough to let you guys do your jobs efficiently, but there are plenty of stories about that here already. Anyway in a past life I was in the Air Force, but my job had me living and working with the US Army. Back in 1996 I was deployed to Bosnia as part of the Multinational Division North and I got stuck working at the Division TOC headquarters, where I had to take care of all the Air Force computers, basically a couple desktops and maybe a dozen laptops at subordinate units. Kind of a weird setup since the equipment belongs to the Air Force, but the network is the Army's and if we needed real IT support, well that was Army as well. Now by this time I'd already hunted down and eliminated a nasty virus on all our computers that the army wasn't completely aware of. They were losing computers left and right on the unsecured network, but they didn't know why. That's another story but I mention it here because I had a bit of a rep now. First off believe me when I say I'm no computer genius, but back in 96 I was able to put my head down and figure things out when I needed to and honestly, I think a lack of formal training was more a benefit than a hindrance. Since the office I worked at was manned 24 7, I was one of the lucky guys who got to rotate between swing and night shift manning the radios. I was maybe halfway through sleeping after a night shift when I was ordered to report to my commander's office because his computer wouldn't start. Evidently, the newly formed J6 guys, communications, basically the Army's tech support, had spent three hours trying to get the computer to turn on and were unable to do so. I was pretty pissed and I'm 110% certain that anybody looking at me could tell since I have the opposite of a poker face. The major is upset his computer isn't working, but what does he expect me to do about it? I mean the frickin' division IT guys looked at it, no matter what their actual title was. Fine, I'll humor the guy. I'm already here and there's a bunch of officers standing around staring at me. I flip the switch and I'm greeted with the warm black glow of the CRT monitor turning on before I see a single fluorescent blip in the top left corner of the screen before the computer simple powers off. Total boot up to shut off is something like 3 to 5 seconds. Now I have no frickin' clue how to get into the BIOS or anything, so I do the only thing that occurs to me, something I've never seen in a manual, I lay my entire arm down on the keyboard and cycle the power switch. I get the same powered black screen and the green blip, but this time after the blip flash the computer's BIOS starts up. By pressing so many keys on startup I introduced a BIOS keyboard error, and it started up so I could address the issue. From there it took all of maybe 10 seconds to see that somehow the computer had been set up to boot from a non-existent B drive. What was happening was that the computer would turn on, see it should get its operating instructions from the B drive and when there was no B drive present, simply turn off. A couple mouse clicks and a save and reboot later, the computer was once again running off of the C drive. I just told the major I was going back to my cot to finish sleeping and topped it off with a, really, you woke me up for this? My total time at the computer was less than 30 seconds. Three for one half. For once this one is fresh out of the oven, ready to go. Barely a week old. That said, it is rather short. Cast. Me, Ola. 
Mi Lamo Primes. Estoy aquí. LL, Customer's Landlord, Cool Guy. PM, Project Manager. POC, Clueless Point of Contact. SUP, My Supervisor, Still No Tolerance for Bull. Tem, Temp who works with SUP and me often. It started out fairly well, actually. The worst part of the morning was that I couldn't finish my Wawa breakfast sandwich because my appetite hadn't recovered from a recent head cold. Anyway, SUP, Tem, and I met up on a customer site to button up a simple job. The customer, a private college, had requested one Category 6 cable each in two brand new dorm buildings to give network access to the building automation system. Tem and I had installed these cables the previous week with minimal pain in half of the allocated time, but I only had a wire map tester. The customer requested certification results, and SUP had the certification tester. 45 minutes including waiting for campus safety, we had our past test results, and were loading up to go to our actual service call that day, decommissioning an office space. Basically we were contracted to go in, grab almost everything that belonged to IT, box it up, and haul it to any nearby FedEx to be shipped back to the customer's home base. The only thing we left behind was the printer slash copier slash fax machine. We also needed to grab anything belonging to the ISP and take it to UPS to ship back to the ISP. Tem and I arrived at the building at 9 o'clock and went inside to find the suite while waiting for SUP, who needed to stop for gas on the way. Once SUP arrived, we showed him what we had found. A locked door with a will return it, sign indicating 10 o'clock. Okay. You can pay us to wait an hour. We called the PM and informed them of the situation, and he agreed that we were on the clock, and it was the customer's fault that there wasn't anyone there to receive us. 10 o'clock comes and goes with no one in sight. Sub calls POC. Voicemail is full. Here we go again. At 10.45 we call the PM again. He gives us the number of the customer's IT help desk, but informs us that it's on the west coast, so they're probably not in yet. Give it till 11. Once we call the customer's IT help desk, things start moving. We actually get an alternate number to call POC. One more phone call later and we are back to square effing one. POC is thoroughly confused as she thought the decommissioning had been postponed. She told us to wait while she confirmed this was happening with her company. While she does that, SUP calls the PM and asks essentially the same question, you sure it's today? Yes, the PM has the email chain in front of him and can confirm that POC was included in the emails. It's about 30 minutes before POC calls us back. For those who have lost track, it is currently 11.30, 2.5 hours on site, and 7.5 billable man hours. She did get confirmation that we were supposed to be there, but she's more than an hour's drive away and doesn't want to drive up to unlock a door for us. She can, however, call the landlord to open the door, but warned us it might take 20 to 25 minutes. Sup advises Tam and me that we should go get lunch if we want to. Neither of us does. I use the time to type the first draft of this as the job that never ends. 20 minutes later, LL shows up and we must have done something right, because he has the keys to open the back door. Once inside we get to work tearing down every monitor, keyboard, mouse, dock, and phone we can find while SUP chats with the LL. In 15 minutes, we have all the workstations packed up and SUP joins us to disassemble the switches, router, modem, and cable boxes and pack them up. 30 minutes after the LL arrives, we are walking out with a cart full of equipment ready to be shipped out. It is now 12.30, 10.5 billable hours. We load the equipment onto our vans, and I eat the room temperature half of my breakfast sandwich while SUP searches for the nearest FedEx location. Fortunately, it's inside a Walmart not too far away, and it's even near our home base. At 1,300 we are walking into Walmart with two carts of equipment. At 1330 we are walking out with several shipping receipts and no carts. At this point, SUP dismissed me, 
saying that he would take care of the ISP equipment and bring Tem back to his car, as both were on his way home. Not counting time spent shipping, we waited three hours for a half hour of work. Does the title make sense now? Large bag of water causes internet outage. At my previous job I worked for a university as a network engineer. It is a large campus with lots of agriculture. Because of some of the distances between buildings and the nature of the farm on the south side of campus, fiber was not run everywhere. This is a story of one such building that was provided with a point-to-point -point wireless link. The shot was just over a mile in distance. Everything worked as expected and really only had issues on rainy days. One bright sunny day we get a ticket, internet is out at farm building. We go out there, everything looks fine. We leave. Few days later, same thing. Okay, odd. A couple of weeks later we get the same report. We think maybe foliage from a nearby tree is causing issues, it was springtime, and the link was installed during winter. Trim the trees. Still getting reports of outages. We realign the APs, doesn't help. What gives? One day in late summer, some co workers are out there and noticed a very large bull laying on top of a hill. The same hill that the wireless link shoots over. Light bulb. They ask about the bull and are told that is his favorite place to lay down. Face palm, they raised the APs higher in the air and the problem went away. Haha ha, dang cow was blocking the wireless signal. I'm on vacation. Hold my emails. This is my first time posting here, but this call just baffled me and I have to share. I work tech support for a company that basically services salespeople and that's it. So, it was my last call of the day. I say my cheerful greeting to the man on the other line, and he tells me that he wants to not be bothered by emails on his phone while he's on vacation. Cool, I think, he wants me to turn off notifications, so he doesn't get constantly told he has emails waiting. I confirm this with him and proceed to tell him how to go on do not disturb for the email system we have been told to move everyone to. He says that the steps don't make sense, and that the options I'm having him look for don't exist. It takes five minutes and a request for someone who knows better to find out he is using the system we moved away from. I tell him he should move to the new system and helped him turn off notifications. He asks for a test email. Cool. I get it. I send the email and he gets it. This was not what he wanted. What he actually wanted was for me to turn off the email account for him. Archangelsbrain.exe has stopped working. I said this was not possible for such a short period of time as a vacation. He weakly accepts the answer and hangs up.